Good evening and welcome back to another episode of The Longing, where today we are going to be finishing off Moby Dick. It's going to be finally the time, and we'll have finally finished. So, let's get on with that, and then we'll have a little chat afterwards. Why not, why not? So, here we go. For an instant, the tranced boat's crew stood still, then turned. The ship? Great God, where is the ship? Soon they, through dim, bewildering, bewil bewildering mediums, saw her sidelong fading phantom, as in the gaseous Fata Morgana. Only the uppermost masts out of water, while fixed by infatuation, or fidelity, or fate, to their once lofty perches, the pagan harpooners still maintained their sinking lookouts on the sea. And now, concentric circles seized the lone boat itself, and all its crew, and each floating oar, and every lance pole and spinning, animate and inanimate, all round and round in one vortex, carried the smallest chip of the Pequod out of sight. But as the last whelmings intermixingly poured themselves over the sunken head of the Indian at the mainmast, leaving a few inches of the erect spar yet visible, together with long streaming yards of the flag, which calmly undulated with ironical coincidings over the destroying billows they almost touched. At that instant, a red arm and a hammer hovered up backwardly uplifted in the open air, in the act of nailing the flag faster and yet faster to the subsiding spar. A skyhawk that tauntingly had followed the main truck downwards from its natural home among the stars, pecking at the flag and incom incommoding Tashtego there. This bird now chanced to intercept its broad fluttering wing between the hammer and the wood, and simultaneously feeling that ethereal thrill, the submerged savage beneath in his death grasp. Death gasp kept his hammer frozen there, and so the bird of heaven, with arch archangelic shrieks and his imperial beak, thrust upwards, and his whole captive form, folded in the flag of Ahab, went down with his ship, which, like Satan, would not silk sink to hell till she, till she had dragged a living part of heaven along with her, and helmeted herself with it. Now small fowls flew screaming over the yet yawning gulf, a sullen white surf beat against its steep sides, then all collapsed, and the great shroud of the sea rolled on as it rolled five thousand years ago. Epilogue, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Job. The drama's done. Why then here does anyone step forth? Because one did survive the wreck. It so chanced that after the Parsee's disappearance, I was he whom the fates ordained to take the place of Ahab's bowsman. When that bowsman assumed the vacant post, the same who, when on the last day of the three men were tossed from out of the rocking boat, was dropped astern. So, floating on the margin of the ensuing scene, and in full sight of it, when the half-spent suction of the sunk ship reached me, I was then, but slowly, drawn towards the closing vortex. When I reached it, it had subsided to a creamy pool round and round then, and ever contracting towards the button-like black bubble at the axis of that slowly wheeling circle. Like another Ixion I did revolve, till, gaining that vital centre, the black bubble upward burst, and now, liberated by reason of its cunning spring, and, owing to its great buoyancy, rising with great force, the coffin lifebuoy shot lengthwise from the sea, fell over and floated by my side. Buoyed up for that, by that coffin, for almost one whole day and night, I floated on a soft and dirge-like mane. The unharming sharks, they glided by as if with padlocks on their mouths. The savage seahawks sailed with sheathed beaks. On the second day, a sail drew near, nearer, and picked me up at last. It was the devious cruising Rachel, that in her retracing search after her missing children, only found 
another orphan. The End Indeed, a very good read. It took some time to finish, but it's not like I'm too busy down here. A shade. <laughs> I really like that touch, actually. Oh my god, that is actually really good. That little touch at the end of the shade. Well, it was indeed a good read. It was mostly whale facts, it felt like. Um... I certainly learned a lot about whales that I didn't know about before, and I'm going to admit my eyes are slightly welling up after that. <laughs> uh, from, just just from the little extra bit from the shade, uh, just there. Cool, that got me a bit more than I was expecting. I was not expecting that at all. So excuse me there. So. Ho, ho, ho. With that done, with the conclusion of Moby Dick... I have one new, well, I have a new path I want to take. What I want to do is I want to go and spend some time in the Halls of Eternity. Uh, we're going to sit on the chair for now. Um, but yeah, we're going to go and spend some time in the Halls of Eternity, um, collecting some paper for the... Um, collecting more paper for the drawings um, so that we can hopefully draw all of them it is going to take us a while and I don't want to spend too long in there in any one go because I will struggle with that in terms of actually having anything to say um, I'm not very good at just randomly chatting within the halls as has been evident from past Advent adventures. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to uh, try and make my way through the bookcase. Um, so all the books in the bookcase I want to read before we wake the king. Now, as some of you may have guessed, that means it's going to take us a while because so far the only books we've read are on the first page, I think. So we've read The Goose Girl, we've read Thus Spoke that Zarathustra, we've reversed that one as well quite a few times, we have now finished Moby Dick, we've read Poems, which, uh, sorry, Poems 2, which has The King, which is obviously a, uh, a sort of, it, well, it almost certainly feels like a, a sort of inspiration for this game. Um, yeah definitely feels like that. We've read Metamorphoses, The Six Swans, and Fables 1. I don't believe... Well, we've definitely not read Z Thus Spoke Zarathustra 2. I'm, ugh, I don't know that I'm going to read Thus Spoke Zarathustra 2, just because the first one was so difficult to read. We, we, we might get onto it. But we're going to read... Ooh, wow, that is small text. <laughs> Amontillado. Probably going to read the Iliad. Uh, but yeah, we're going to try and make our way through these various books. I want to read this library, um, of which there is actually quite a few pages of. So, you know, we'll, 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 we'll make our way through. Uh, that much is for certain. Um, so the 400 days that I had wanted to do, I think is going to end up becoming a lot more than that. Um, especially if it's about 10 pages, 10, well, nine or 10 pages per episode, depending on the text size, considering that is tiny. Oh, that, that's normal size again. But yeah, um, if we're doing roughly 10 pages, it's going to take us way more than the 400 days left uh, the, the, the amount of days that we have left just to get through these which I am fine with I'm quite happy to keep going and just read the books we don't get enough time to read normally I certainly wouldn't normally read um, these kind of books certainly if it was down to me um, I wouldn't have read Moby Dick if it wasn't for this 
But yeah, what I'm going to do is I am going to make my way through editing together all of the chapters that we've read, because I still have the original recordings of all of these. Uh, edit all of the chapters together into one long video so that I can release that as a single sort of standalone video that is just the reading of Moby Dick so that if anyone wants to listen to it all the way through in one in in one sort of sitting without having to go through the whole rigmarole of starting and ending the episodes that's going to be grand for them uh, we'll, I'll probably end up releasing the other ones as individual standalone uh, readings as well um, <clears throat> Yeah, we'll just we'll just take it as we go. But other than that, for now, I'm going to say thank you very much for joining me today. Uh, I hope you all have a wonderful morning, evening, afternoon or night, no matter what time of day it is. I hope you all have a wonderful one of it. And as always, we will be back tomorrow for more of The Longing. Goodbye.